Welcome to the podcast that's been named one of the best in marketing research. This is Research Business Daily Report. We are the industry's only daily research video blog. And we're made possible by our exclusive community at the crowdfunding platform, patreon.com forward slash RBDR. I'm Bob Letterer for 25 years, the respected voice in market research. A few weeks from now, as the calendar moves into 2020, the American research industry is going to need to be prepared to deal with a major state initiative. In California, the California Consumer Privacy Act, or CCPA, following in the footsteps of the EU's GDPR, which was inaugurated in 2019, is structured to impact research companies and users in that state. However, because of the size of California, its population, and the number of research businesses in the state, CCPA must be understood for its clear implications on the research industry in the other 49 states. Stuart Pardow has been an outside counsel to the Insights Association and its predecessor, MRA, dating back to 2015. We asked, and he accepted our request to explain why CCPA, which is supposed to enhance privacy rights and consumer protection for California residents, is so important throughout the United States. Stuart? Great. Thanks, Bob. So I'm here to talk about uh, the new California Consumer Protection Act. It's a law that takes effect in January of this coming year, in 2020. And it applies to anyone that has a business that has customers in California or collects information from residents of California. It's the most far-reaching privacy law in the United States. Some of you have had an influence or rather uh, experience with the GDPR, uh, the European law that took effect in May of 2018. I'd say the fundamental difference is the GDPR is more focused on consent, whereas the CCPA is more focused on notice. So we give notice to consumers, to individuals, about the information that we're collecting about them. So who does it impact? It impacts any business that has $25 million in revenue, collects more than uh, 50,000 records annually, or derives 50% or more of its revenue from the collection of personal information. Now, I know many market research firms are smaller enterprises, and you feel you may not be covered by the $25 million threshold, but it's really any of them. So what we are viewing this as the fact that you're deriving 50% of your revenue, and most market research firms are in the business of collecting information, analyzing that information, you will fall within that exception. The other factor to consider is what constitutes personal information. It's by far the most expansive definition we've seen in the United States. Indeed, it's even more expansive than what we've seen in the EU. It covers IP addresses, browser information, along with the usual sort of things that you would expect, like name, address, email, that sort of thing. There's also even information that may be anonymized or masked. It will cover uh, infra what we call inferential information. I'd say the big ticket item is what's known as statutory damages. There is a data breach component. If there's a data breach, you are subject to very substantial penalties ranging from $100 to $750 per record. So the bottom line is it's about notice more so than it is opting in, though there's an opt-in component for uh, children under the age of 16, an expansive right there. But you wanna have your opt-out notice, you wanna have your right of erasure notice, and a right, what's known as a right to know notice. These are all notices you've gotta give and you've gotta comply with them. New law takes effect January 1. Um, major takeaways, you're gonna require revisions to your privacy policy. You wanna have adequate notices to the um, consumers. You wanna have training. Um, and uh, for heaven's sakes, look at your insurance policies, make sure that you're gonna have coverage there because the data breach component here is the big ticket item. Uh, if Stuart can be of any help to anyone out there, his email address is stuart at pardallaw.com. This is the final RBDR for 2019, and we want to thank each and every viewer out there who watched any of our videos this year. 
We take our editorial commitment to produce vital research information that goes largely unreported anywhere else extremely seriously. And we hope that RBD, our viewers, appreciate our reports, share them with peers and friends, and see a reason to support us in 2020. Research Business Daily Report is made possible by our crowdfunding platform at patreon.com forward slash rbdr. We continue to produce RBDR thanks to the generosity of our most regular viewers, who we call Patreon supporters. Now, any viewer can support RBDR by visiting patreon.com forward slash rbdr. So if you have not done so, please take one minute and join us and our mission. Anyone who has watched any of our videos with any kind of regularity knows that the five minutes that each RBDR tends to last is certainly time well spent. So again, visit patreon.com forward slash RBDR. We hope that you all have a happy holiday and happy new year, and we expect to see you back with us on Monday, January the 6th.